All right. Well, hello, everyone. We are so excited because it is our first official launch of our Talk of the Town podcast, where each week we bring you valuable insight and information that directly affects our local business community. I'm Danielle Hawley, and I'm the executive director of the best chamber of commerce around, the Fontana Chamber of Commerce. And I'm proud to bring you our Talk of the Town podcast with my co-host, Mr. Carlos Garcia of FYI Technologies. Hey, Danielle, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I, I'm doing great. I am so excited about the launch of this podcast. I know we've been talking about it for a little while. Yes. And here we are, very first episode, our very own. Danielle Hall, the executive director of the Fontana Chamber. <laughs> Woo, so I'm in the hot seat first, huh? You are in the hot seat, my friend. Uh, and right this is great. Because, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get to know, I mean, we, we'll talk a little bit about the chamber a little bit later on, but I want folks to know the D Danielle that I know. So I, you and I go back a little bit. Um, I've yeah. known you from different events and different opportunities that we've had to connect. But I want folks to get to know their executive director, Danielle. So... <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you. I know that you're you're straight from Fontana, so let's start there. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Carlos. Um, I am truly a Fontana girl, uh, born and raised. It's in my blood. It's in my family's blood. Uh, and so, you know, being able to take on this position as executive director of the chamber was just really a dream come true, uh, but really a culmination of a lot of my life's experiences uh, and just, you know, choices that led me to this point. And so uh, I'm going to start way back uh, at Fontana High School, where I graduated as a senior from Fontana High School. But um, Fontana High School is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, when my family first came to Fontana in the 1950s, my grandfather actually was in the first graduating class at Fontana High School. Uh, he wow. played football there. Yes. Uh, and this was before they had all the buildings completed. You know, I hear stories of them having classes in the um, school buses and uh, it was definitely not the fall high that we know today. Um, so that's that's a huge part of my history. Um, but, you know, grandpa was in the first graduating class, played football. My dad, my uncle, my mom, pretty much my entire family went to Fontana High School. Now, granted, it was the only high school around, you know, up until the, the late 90s. Uh, but just a rich history there in Fontana. And, um, you know, excitingly, I, my senior year, I was able to be crowned Miss Fontana. And that was really a dream wow. true. Yes. Um, you know, and back then it was a competition between the high schools. We had A.B. Miller at the time, uh, Fontana High School. Kaiser was just getting their first graduating class. And so it was always a big, you know, competition to see which high school would get Miss Fontana. And so I was happy to bring it home for Faux High my year. Uh, it was a really big deal, uh, but just a great way to cap off my senior year, uh, being able to represent the city and the chamber at that time. So my history here with the chamber really goes back uh, to, I'm going to tell you my year, 2001. So you guys can all do the math. I was 18 when I won. <laughs> and here we are in 2024. Um, you know, just being able to represent the chamber, our business community, and of course, the amazing city in which I lived, uh, really laid the foundation uh, for the doors that God was going to open for me uh, to bring me here full circle, um, leading the chamber. Uh, but back then, the pageant, you know, was ran by the Fontana Chamber of Commerce. And so uh, one of the funny stories that I have, I will never forget the chamber's telephone number. And it's the same today as it was 23 years ago, 909-822. Four four three three because when you wanted to call to vote for your People's Choice Award for Miss Fontana, you had to call the chamber. <laughs> so we all have that seared in our brain. Everybody that ran that year, um, but no, it, it really is, and I, I I I feel honored. You know, every day that I walk through the door of the chamber, you know, I remember being 18 years old and walking through those doors of the chamber, attending you know Miss Fontana meetings and leadership trainings and. Uh, just all of those things that were such a vital part of um, me developing as a young woman, figuring out what I was doing with my life uh, professionally and, um, you know, just a, an amazing skill set that I was able to get by participating in the Miss Fontana pageant. So I feel like we could do a whole podcast on Miss Fontana. Right. We will once it gets closer to pageant time. Uh, but I could talk for hours about Miss Fontana and the amazing impact that it had not only on my life, but just generations of young women within our community, really, truly equipping them and setting them up for success to be the future leaders in Fontana. Uh, so here we are. <laughs> awesome. Well, be before I even dive into the Fontana Chamber, I, I also want folks to to know 
you changed a lot of lives also in your career, right? You want to talk a little bit about that that episode of your life? Sure. So when I uh, was going through through college, um, I really wanted to be a teacher for as long as I could remember. I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and I did. I accomplished that goal. Um, I obtained my master's and like three teaching credentials to do elementary, junior high, high school and everything in between. Right. Um, and so that was a fun season in my life. I taught for eight years. Um, I did teach here in Fontana Unified um, at uh, Randall Pepper, Canyon Crest. I finished at Sierra Lakes and then I transitioned to Bloomington Christian where I was a high school teacher. And that was a that was a dramatic jump. I really have to be honest. You know, I had always dealt with elementary school age children and <laughs> going to high school was like, whoa, wait a minute, time out. What is happening here? Um, but oddly enough, I, you know, I did more time. It sounds like I was in prison or something. I did more time in high school and junior high than I did in elementary. Uh, but it was I feel like they taught me a lot um is probably if you know more than what i taught them i don't know i feel like we both taught each other something um and i was fortunate enough to have been a coach um through those years and my husband and i did a lot of youth ministry through that time so we were really saturated with young adults i mean it was just we couldn't escape them you know during the day and the evenings we were with them um but that that truly was a a really really awesome time in my life um being able to uh, mentor and um, just really be there for, you know, a lot of, a lot of students, a lot of, a lot of kids that were hurting, um, going through really difficult things, you know, being a teenager is tough, right? Yeah, exactly, being an right? adult is tough, <laughs> but it's even tougher. I think when you're going through those years and you're trying to find yourself and figure out who you are. And, um, so yeah, so that was, you know, that was a really interesting season of my life teaching. Um, I do miss it. I miss the students, but I, I wouldn't trade what I'm doing now. Uh, for anything, I feel like, um, you know, God opens doors and puts you in positions so that he can teach you something, right? If we're open and available, he'll teach us something. And so I feel like each of those seasons of my life, I learned so much. I grew as a person. I was challenged in ways that I never expected. Um, and I feel like it really developed some grit and some character. <laughs> and that's something my dad always says, you need more character. I'm like, I don't need, I don't, don't ask for character because then you're going to get tested <laughs> like no other. Um, but I, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And it was just, you know, like I said, a, a fun season, uh, but I truly love where I'm at now. And it's been really great to kind of reflect back at this uh, stage of my life um, and see all of the positions that I was in, the doors that were open, the relationships I made, the connections that I made uh, that really brought me back home to Fontana. Um, not only just leading the chamber, but my husband and I um, bought a home here in Fontana, which I'd like to share a little bit about um, our house that we bought. So yeah, our, I hear there's, a, there's a great story behind this too. <laughs> and there's a lot of history there. Um, so the house that we live in was, um, and I wouldn't say it's the original house that my great grandparents lived in when they first came to Fontana. Um, it's the second and only because the original house is now a street. So when my great grandparents came here, they bought this entire property um, and I'm not going to tell you exactly where it's at, uh, but it's here near the chamber um, and it was all orange groves back then. And so there was a home developer at the time. I'm sure a lot of people have he heard about John Baruchin. And so my great grandpa and John were just buds. Uh, they hung out all the time. And my great grandpa came here as an immigrant from Poland uh, at the age of like 15. A kid just came across, went to Ellis Island. His name's there um, and decided, you know, we're going to come to America and I'm just going to figure this thing out. I mean, I couldn't even imagine doing that at that age, but uh, it was a totally different generation. And so I uh, came here, met my great grandma, um, and then they moved to, Fon ended up in Fontana of all places, right? Um, and so they bought this property and so they, they kept a small portion of it. And so my current house, uh, which like I said, is not the original home that they lived in because that's now a street, uh, but the house that I live in now was my great grandparents' house. And right next door to me, uh, my grandparents live and they've lived there their entire married life um, since the 1950s and they're still alive. And that's my grandpa that graduated from Fontana High School. And so uh, I get to come home every day and see my grandma and grandpa and uh, grandpa makes pancakes on the weekend. That's my great grandma's recipe. I mean, it's just so it's just so picture perfect. Right. Um, but it's it's great being in this this home. And so when my 
great grandparents passed away, my aunt and uncle moved in and they were there for 27 years. Uh, they just retired. Yes. So they just retired, moved to Arizona. And I thought, okay, well, we got to keep the, the house and the family. I mean, this is part of our heritage here in Fontana. Uh, so my husband, my amazing husband and I bought the home and that's where we live today. Very cool. So it, it's obvious there's a great history. There's a great attachment with you in Fontana, um, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents as well. So this transition now to what inspired you to pursue a career in the chamber? Okay. Um, and you're going to laugh at this because, <laughs> and I think I've shared this story before. I did not pursue a career here at the chamber. The chamber found me. <laughs> Um, and I think this was something, you know, that I, I feel like things just, you know, you, you, you end up where you're supposed to be. Uh, and I, I'm, you know, truly believe that when you're obedient to where God has you, he leads you in the right direction. Right. Um, and so I would say this time, literally a year ago, um, I was here helping out with the chamber and we had some transitions and things happening. Um, and I had told our chamber president, Phil Cothran, you know, I am not sitting in that seat. I will be here to help because, you know, the chamber is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I don't want to see, you know, a transition, have any hiccups. Right. So I'll just be here to kind of give some oversight. I've been around for a long time. Um, and so then I gradually just kept showing up every day and one thing led to another and here we are. And so we decided to make it official in December um, and publicly announced that I was the new executive director, but I had been, you know, in the seat, you know, helping out and just kind of reshaping some things over the last probably nine months or so before we announced it publicly. And so um, I think it was just the draw into, again, coming back to everything Fontana, right? The Fontana Chamber is the advocate, voice, and resource of our local business community. And without a strong, thriving business community, everything else suffers. And so I didn't want to see any any sort of decline. Um, so here we are. And I have to say that this does not feel like a job. They say if you do what you love, you never work a day in your yeah. life. And, and I, I can't say that enough. Um, and not that I didn't love teaching and all the other things that I did, but it it doesn't feel like work to me. I can't wait to get to the office and to our events every day. I have an amazing staff um, and I just feel so blessed to be able to sit in this seat today as the ED of the chamber, never in a million years that I think that that would be in my future. Uh, but here we are and I, I truly could not be happier and more excited about what we're doing and where we're going and uh, just the direction that we're headed in. Well, I will tell you, as a chamber member, I am very grateful and blessed to have you leading the way for the chamber because you are doing some amazing things for our community and, and our business community, more importantly, with that, too. So thanks for that. But I also have a question since we're talking about the chamber for the moment. Talk about talk of the town. OK, elaborate a little bit about this. What's the purpose behind our podcast? I love that. OK. So, you know, we um, at the chamber, we love to host events, right? We always have something going on um, and there's probably more going on than what we're able to convey to you guys in the limited time that we can see you throughout the month, right? Like we have our monthly luncheon. Uh, we have our business networking meetings. We're launching two mixers this year and so many other amazing events, ribbon cuttings, all the things that the chamber does. Right. Um, but those are just little snippets that we get to really have that face time with you guys to let you know, really the nitty gritty of what's happening in the chamber, in the business community. And so um, it's 2024. We got to get with the times. And so we said, hey, what is another way that we can get our message out? And everyone's doing a podcast, right? So why not? Why are we not doing a podcast? You know, we're on Instagram, Facebook, we've got our website, uh, but this was just another great way for us to reach a broader audience and really share a, um, just everything that is happening in the Fontana Chamber. So throughout the course of our podcast, because it's official, there's no going back now. That's right. That's <laughs> there's right. no going back. Um, so the trains roll in every week. We are going to come uh, out with a new episode. And I really want to just, again, just paint the broader picture through this um, avenue of what is happening here at the chamber and have a little more in-depth conversation about some things 
uh, one on one with some of our members, with our board members, our board president, myself, our staff, um, and just really keeping a pulse on, you know, legislation that's impacting us, um, events that are coming up, changes that are happening. And so just another great tool in our tool belt uh, to really, I come back to our mission statement, be an advocate, voice and resource to our business community. So talk of the town, it's happening. Like, subscribe, share it. Um, we'd really appreciate that. And don't forget to tune in um, so that you guys can, you know, you don't want to miss anything. So uh, make sure you're you're checking out what we have going on on Talk of the Town. Tell folks how they can get on the podcast as well, too. Oh, okay. This is really exciting because we've had, since we've announced it in December, we've had a lot of interest uh, to be on the podcast. And so uh, what we've decided to do and this is, again, going back to being a chamber member, perks of being a member, right? Um, we have our monthly luncheon, second Thursday of the month at the Jesse Turner Center. And so what we've decided, our members that attend our luncheon get entered into a raffle to be on the podcast. And so we have next week our very first podcast winner, uh, Cedar House Life Change Center. We're going to hear from Melissa and Jake. So they were our first winners. We're super excited to have them on and uh, hear about all the amazing things that they're doing. Um, and then in January, we also chose another winner which is going to be Pastor Danny from Calvary Chapel, Fontana. And so um, come to the luncheon, you know, join. Just you want to be a part of the chamber and what we're doing, because that's going to be another great platform for you to come on the show, talk about your business and everything that's happening. Awesome. And folks, again, make sure you subscribe to the podcast as well, too, and join the chamber luncheon. You never know. We might end up interviewing you here very soon. You'll very be quickly. in the hot seat. That's right. That's right. So let me, let me go back. Um, when you take a look at where you are now from where you were, what is, what is something in particularly in your career that stands out for you that you're very proud of? I want folks to know that the, the last thing that we talk about is, you know, your accomplishments. Mm. Okay. This is going to be a little emotional, but it's going to end on a high note. So stick with me. Okay. Uh, right. So one thing in my career, I said I've done, you know, several things um, and I can stand here today feeling equipped at the place that I am in my life because I feel like I've acquired um, so many different things throughout my years. But one of the things that really stands out to me is my grit. <laughs> I've, I've got some grit and you don't get grit unless you've gone through some really difficult times in your life. And so I wanted to share probably that little missing piece that I didn't share yet between uh, teaching and working at a church uh, to the chamber. There's a small gap of time there. And so um, my uncle uh, was a public, I say was, uh, he passed on, but I'll, I'll share that in a second, uh, was a public works contractor. And so I had had this brief uh, break of time where I didn't really need to work. And so I was, you know, I'm not really a sit around kind of girl. I get really bored. And I always have to have something going on. But my husband said, why don't you just take a little break for a while? Um, just enjoy life. And so um, I did that for a little bit and I got really bored. Um, and my uncle had a public works company that he started and he was in his 60s and just thought, you know, before I retire, I just want to start a company. And I said, kudos to you, uncle. Like, that's amazing. Um, so it doesn't matter what age you are. You can begin anything. Um, you're never it's never too late. You're never too old. Uh, and he did. And so I personally had never remember I was a teacher. I had never used QuickBooks. I didn't know what accounting. I didn't know any of that stuff. And so I I'm a very fast learner. So I bought a book and I learned accounting. I learned public works accounting because you have to do certified payroll. I learned how to read plans and we had this public works uh, plumbing company and we did projects all throughout San Bernardino County, San Diego County, Riverside. We were everywhere. Um, and through that process, I stepped into something that was very uncomfortable for me, uh, but I did it for the family, right? It's like, sure, uncle right. needs help. I'll be your office manager. Of course, I had no idea. I remember so many nights coming home crying to my husband saying, oh my gosh, babe, I don't know QuickBooks and this and that. And I just, I don't know, it aged me. I feel like I just got some gray hairs or something, you know? Uh, but through that, I keep going back to that word grit. Um, I kept showing up. I figured it out. I literally, I'm not kidding. I bought an accounting book and made flashcards and just figured it out and made it happen uh, because that's something that my uncle taught me. He said, you just make it happen. He said, there's no perfect life. Life's going to be tough. You take the challenges, but you make it happen. Um, and so three years into us having our company, uh, he got diagnosed with cancer. And unfortunately, uh, he passed away shortly after that. And so I was left alone with this company that he left to me. 
Um, he had passed on. I had open jobs. I had to go to the supply house. I had to meet, you know, our workers at the jobs. I mean, and this is a very male dominated industry. And so not only did I have to just get it together dealing with my own personal loss, but I was totally a fish out of water in this industry, but I just figured it out. And I think that was kudos to his encouragement and uh, really telling me, you know, just make it happen. That was that's the, my husband and I always say that. That's our motto. Just make it happen. No excuses. Um, and so I think that through that process and and losing him, I, I, there's there's a loss there. But I feel like I gained so much. Not only just being able to be there for someone and the you know make. I got to help realize his dream, right? He wanted to build this company and we did, and it was successful. And I learned so much about business and running a business through that. So that was a gift that he gave me. Uh, but through the loss of him, I feel like I gained so much knowledge, so much experience, so much wisdom that if it hadn't been for him and that very, what it is, it's a, it's a huge loss in my life, right? There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about him. Um, but if I didn't have that happen to me, I wouldn't be here today. Um, I wouldn't, you know, be able to do the things that being a chamber exec requires of me in a lot of ways. And so, um, you know, God uses everything for good. And I feel like if you keep showing up, you allow the grit to happen, you know, life's going to be tough. Uh, but you got to keep digging in, keep showing up. Uh, and that's just, you know, one thing that I feel like was was a highlight and not to end on, you know, let's end on a positive, <laughs> right. uh, you know, but it, it, it did it. It truly gave me that that finishing up that I needed to to really enter this next season of my life. You know, that's that's an awesome story. And I appreciate you opening up and sharing that with us because that that is part of what he left behind his legacy, right? And you're able to talk about it. You're able to honor that as well too, which is amazing too. Uh, but I also will tell you that um knowing that about you as well, I don't know, we might have to nickname you the grit, you know? <laughs> The Fontana Grit. I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with something, right? It's a work in progress. But I appreciate you being such a good sport, being on the hot seat this time, um, launching this podcast. Um, what else can we expect in the future as we wrap up uh, this podcast? Yes. So thank you again, Carlos, for being my amazing co-host uh, and making this happen. I just want to give you a quick shout out. Uh, FYI Technologies, uh, you're a chamber member, you're a small business owner. Uh, we just appreciate you coming alongside of the Fontana Chamber and partnering uh, with us to make this happen. Uh, and again, every week you can expect an amazing show. Some will be a little bit longer than others. Uh, but again, we just want to be a great advocate voice and resource to you. And so we always want to come with uh, just great insight, great wisdom, um, and expose you to some of our members, our board members, and uh, things that we just can't put on social media, right? I mean, I think on our stories, we have, what, 20 seconds, a minute sometimes uh, on the reels. And so we're trying to cram all of this in. And so this gives us some freedom uh, to just, you know, be ourselves and really have that longer format to really get into the thick of what's happening. And so obviously, as the year progresses, we have events coming up that we'll be talking about as legislation comes out that impacts our businesses. You better believe we're going to talk about that, too. Uh, and just ways that we can uh, better equip our, our business owners. But also, you know, uh, I hope you enjoy listening to this. I hope it's fun uh, and you get something out of it. Uh, but just really a way that we can stay connected on a deeper level uh, in this longer format. So uh, next week, like I said, uh, we'll have episode number two. We have Cedar House Life Change Center. And then episode three, uh, we're going to flip and we're going to put you in the hot seat, Carlos. So they'll oh, get to hear no. from you. <laughs> oh, man. I know. Uh, and just get to know you a little bit better, right? The faces behind the podcast. I don't know. Face behind the chamber, face behind FYI. Um, it's just an opportunity because we're all human, right? We're all human. That's one thing I told you coming into this. I want it to be authentic. I'm big on authenticity. Um, black and white. I'm in the season of my life. It's like, just shoot me straight. Just tell me the, tell me the truth. If it hurts, if it doesn't, just shoot me straight. Um, and so that's what we want to do here. We want to have some real talk. Uh, just about things that are impacting our business community. And so uh, that's what you can expect. Um, and, you know, if you come to the luncheon, join the chamber, you just might be uh, entered into the raffle to be a guest on our next podcast. So, but we're super excited to kick this off. It's going to be an amazing year. Um, and I love that we're doing something new. I told you 2024, I have, I have a vision and a, a phrase for each year. And so 2024, uh, my vision for the chamber is 2024 growth like never before. And so us adding in this podcast is just another way that we're growing and expanding our reach and what we're doing. And I love that you guys are coming along on this journey with us to be a part of it. So it's going to be, 
going to be fun. <laughs> All right. Until next week, you guys. We'll see. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. All again. right. Thanks for being such a gracious host and, and uh, a trooper for sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week.